There's a place in Michigan where the roofs of caves have collapsed and given us a look deep into the earth and deep into time. Descending to the bottom of these mysterious places called sinkholes, we find an ancient form of life that survives without oxygen. We find plants that don't exist in the surrounding areas and clues to how Michigan was formed. The sinkholes were formed by the percolating of water through the soil, and as it does that, it becomes more acidic. And down below us, maybe anywhere from five, six, seven, eight hundred feet, you have gypsum and other types of minerals that are quickly dissolved by acidic water. It forms caverns, it forms tunnels, it forms crevasses. When the roofs become thin, they collapse, and when they collapse, they actually form the sinkholes. Scientists think these sinkholes formed before the Great Lakes, after the glaciers retreated from Michigan. The temperature and humidity at the bottom of the sinkholes is different than it is at the top. What we found is that our sites where these rare ferns were growing were on average about 14 degrees Fahrenheit cooler during the warmest months. Most of the vegetation we see is identical to that on the surface. But as we descend, it gets colder. We are down at the very bottom of the sinkhole, and it's, it feels like we're standing in a refrigerator, like it's noticeably cooler when you squat down. And it's a pretty warm day out today too, so it feels good. This makes it possible for species of ferns and mosses to live here that you don't start to see until hundreds of miles north. This is a window into the vegetation that would have lived in the surrounding areas when the average temperature of Michigan was lower. You get a lot of really rare ferns and interesting plants that can survive in these sinkholes that might be really rare across the landscape in general. It's almost like a more ancient pocket of uh, what the forest used to look like several thousand years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Photographer Holland Johnson collects images to update the Michigan Karst Society about what species are thriving down here. They're really important for conservation just because they support a lot of plants that you might not find anywhere else for many, many hundreds of miles. Taking inventory of the species living at the bottom of the sinkholes and comparing it to the environment topside helps scientists understand how species move across the landscape as the climate changes. What these places represent is just an incredible refugium on the landscape from climate change and can be totally essential for rare plants to be able to hang on during climate change. So protecting places like this that have unique climate is absolutely essential. Some of these sinkholes fill with water. This one is 90 feet straight down. Scuba diver Dusty Cliffman sends a camera down to check out the sinkhole and determines it's safe to dive. Okay, I think we're ready to go have an adventure. Go see what lies at the bottom of the sinkhole. The water becomes cloudy and it makes it hard to see. Like flying out of the clouds on an airplane, we descend into a clear layer. We find springs feeding the sinkhole. The water is coming from deep underground. It has 83 times the amount of sulfur, almost no oxygen, and nearly 100 times the amount of salt as the surrounding fresh water of the Great Lakes. These are similar to the conditions on Earth billions of years ago. These purple mats of slime are called cyanobacteria, and they reach back to the beginning of life on Earth. Instead of using sunlight, oxygen, and water to make their food like plants, they break down sulfur from the groundwater. They evolved in a time before the Earth even had an atmosphere of oxygen. We actually found where the beast breathes. So we went down and uh, saw it spewing out, which is really cool. This sinkhole is a window deep into the history of our planet. Michigan's geological treasures can help us understand more about how plant species move across the landscape over time, and how life on Earth survived when our planet looked much different than it does today. For those of us lucky enough to live in Michigan, these places are only a road trip away. It's always a good time to connect with nature, learn about the world around you, and explore the wild where you are. I'm Coulter Stewart.